how we can get from being powerless to powerful. I don't know everybody wants to hear that one. But um, we're coming out tonight of, we're going to be coming out of Romans uh, chapter 4. And Jamie, put your glasses on. No, chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. It's going to be nice one day when you finally get to heaven and you ain't got to have no glasses. Amen. You ain't got to strain your eyes and you'll be able to see everything and everything will be well, beautiful and bright. But it's Romans chapter 5, 1 through 8. Benji, have that on the board. I want to start off a little bit before we get into the scripture. Now that I got all my stuff together. You know, we talk about in the steps of being uh, powerless. We're powerless over our addiction. Or our lives have become unmanageable because we have been powerless. And you know, after watching this video right here, I see that we're not powerless. When we have Jesus Christ in our heart, he gives us the power. He gives us the strength to fight any battle that's out there. Including addiction, including alcohol, whatever the sin is in your life, he gives you the strength to overcome any obstacle, any battle. So thank God for that. We always go to the uh, most loving verse that I, one of my favorite verses is Philippians 4.13. It says, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can do all things, not just a little bit, not some, but it says we can do all things. And when we went through our addictions and we saw that our life was unmanageable, why was our life unmanageable? It's because we couldn't control our addiction, right? So what do we do? We fuel ourselves up with the drug or with the alcohol to try to fill, fill a void that we have somewhere in our body. A lot of people say, well, what do you mean a void? I know when I would find ways to make myself happy. A lot of times I'll be depressed real bad and I, and I would go in these um, like modes to where I didn't want to be around anybody and I would try to separate myself. I didn't want to answer the phone. I used to dearly love to go fishing. I wouldn't go fishing. All I wanted to do was just stay in my house and hide from the world. How many has been like that? Maybe somebody here tonight is like that right now. But God knows your heart and God is capable of, of helping you through any trial or any tribulation that you're going through here tonight. Now think about the word powerless. Of all those years that I did end up on my couch and I thought about dying or I thought about had the desire to kill myself and the desire for God to take me out or somehow or another that the drug would kill me because I didn't have the nerve to kill myself. And I've seen times where I would sit. Shannon would be at work and I would think about ways. I would think about getting in my car or my truck and flying down the road and not trying to hurt nobody else but hit something. I found myself even riding down the road trying to play it out in my mind. But I could never do it. And I think back of all them selfish times. What if I had a did it? What if I had a really went through? I think about it. I didn't have no money. I didn't have nothing that really I could leave behind that would help nobody. But I think about all the wonderful things that God has laid out for me right now in this moment. I would have never seen that happen in my life. I would have never seen my grandchild born. I would never see my wife again with a smile on her face. I would, she would be walking around miserable because of what choice I, I decided to do. I would have left that burden behind to my family and friends. And when they do think about me, they say, well, Jamie, I don't know what he had going on, but I hate it. I didn't know he was like that. I didn't know he was capable of it. You don't never know what's going to be said after you're dead and gone. But I do know this much. And I will tell you and testify to you tonight, there's nothing in this world worth to take your life over. Amen? Yeah, amen? amen. The devil is going to try to tell you that you are worthless and that you have no reason to live and that nobody respects you, nobody cares about you, you can't get a job or whatever the situation is. 
He's going to try, and he's going to try, and he's going to try to make you make that decision. And I don't know why I got off on that subject tonight. It's not even what I'm talking about. So I don't know what somebody's thinking about in here. I don't know where your heart's at or what you went through today or this week. Maybe God just wants you to know that he loves you and to hold your head up, and he's going to always be by your side. I don't know that for sure, but I believe somebody's hurting in here tonight for me to skip my whole lesson and everything and for God to put that on my heart. It may be somebody sitting beside you tonight that you know nothing about or you think you know and they are dying on the inside and they need help. It may be reaching out right now, trying to figure out a way to just build a relationship with somebody or to start a relationship over or to make amends within the family, whether it be father and son, daughter or mother. I don't know the situation. But I do know this, God don't make mistakes. And nothing's a coincidence when it comes to God. God's got a perfect time and a place for everything in every person's life here tonight. So with that said, let's get into Romans. All right, it's Romans chapter 5. Verse 1, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. How many believe that? All right. Verse 2, through whom also we have asset by faith unto this grace in which we stand and rejoice in. Hope of the glory of God. I'm going to read this from mine because it's hard for me to look sideways here. I want to start over so I can read it to you right. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Though whom also we have access by faith into his grace. You want to realize without God's grace, we would be nothing. Without God's grace, we would be nothing, could never be anything. But God loved us so much, his grace, that he sent his son to the cross to die for you and I. That's his grace. And now our faith should be set on Jesus and what he did at the cross. We need to make sure that we know that we know and that our faith is on what Jesus did at the cross. The whom also we have access by faith until this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. I've got hope tonight. Do you have hope? Amen. Now, I'm up here, and I know it's quiet out there, so I need a little help out there. I need some amens or shouting or something going on tonight, because just because it's raining don't mean we got to be gloomy and quiet. Amen. So when you feel like you want to holler amen or you want to shout, ain't nobody going to tell you you can't do that here, Grace. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance. Tribulations. How many has been through something in your life that you thought that was going to tear you down, but you found out after you went through it, it made you stronger? That's when you start learning something. And that's when you... Trusting God and God, when he gets you through that situation, you look back and you say, I know it's a mighty God out there because without God, I would have never got through it. I don't know how many times I've said that. And perseverance, character and character, hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our heads and our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. When God sent his son Jesus to go to the cross at Calvary and die, when you accepted Jesus Christ in your heart and when Jesus died on that cross, he sent the Holy Spirit to live within you and to dwell within you. That's where you're getting the conviction at when you do wrong. That's the Holy Spirit living in you. You know that little thing that says this is not right, you shouldn't do it? It's the Holy Spirit guiding and directing your life. He's always with us. So you go back to the verse, uh, I mean, uh, Philippians 4.13, if you go back there. You remember that verse because you know that the Holy Spirit is living in you. 
and that you're never alone. You're never by yourself, that uh, Christ is always with you. You take Christ to the liquor store. You take Christ to the bars. You take Christ to the crack houses. You take Christ when you go in the bathroom and shoot up. When you take a drink, you're drinking in front of Christ. Why do I say that? Because we need to be aware. If we love Christ, and I'm not sitting up here being self-righteous, I'm just saying, if you love Christ as your Lord and Savior, if he was really with you, would you take him to the same places if you could physically see him? Would you take your mama somewhere like that? Why in the world do we take Christ places like that? When I'm at home and me and my wife are arguing, the person y'all don't see that you think that don't argue, when I get home, I have a real life. Amen. And I'm going to be who I am because just because I'm standing up here does not mean I'm no better than nobody else. I have my bad days. I have the words that come out of my mouth that shouldn't come out of my mouth when I get mad, when I'm outside of these doors. And I'm going to be honest because God knows me who I lie. No need to lie to you. I could fool you all day, but I ain't fooling God. He knows what kind of person I am when I leave these doors. He knows what kind of wretched sinner I am when I'm not around y'all and I have thoughts that, that shouldn't be in my head. He knows everything about me. So it's not my job to stand up here and say righteous or self-righteous remarks because I'm nowhere close to self-righteous. I'm a messed up individual. I'm just as messed up as anybody out there. But I will try to tell you some of the mistakes that I made in my life. I will try to testify and let you know how I overcome them. And it was uh, because of Jesus Christ. And it was because of his love. And yes, we have to be obedient. Does that mean we can't have fun in life? Yes, we can have fun. When I was back in my office uh, studying for Sunday and trying to put this together, I could hear all the kids laughing. I could hear the grown-ups back there playing pool and and. Just sitting back there, it, it, from here, it sounded like joy. It sounded like everybody was having a good time, a family, a big family together, and, and also a real family together. And, I, and it sounds so good to be able to listen to somebody um, happy. Because when we leave these doors, we're so used to this world being depressing. We're so used to seeing bad in our life. We turn the news on and there's bad. You look at the newspaper, there's bad. You look at Facebook, it's bad. Very few things now will lift your spirits. Everything you hear, see, or around is just negative here lately. But thank God we have a place that we can come worship. That where we can feel like we are wanted, amen? That's one thing I talked to Bobby about and we discussed. And I've always been this way. I'm going to be who I am wearing this shirt. I'm going to be who I am wearing my ball cap. I'm going to be who I am wearing my skinny jeans and I'm 52 years old. If I like skinny jeans, my goodness, I'm going to wear skinny jeans. So you won't get no self-righteous self remarks here. And I'm saying this for a joke, but also I'm saying it too because self-righteous people are sending people to hell every day. You want to know why? Because people will go to church and they hadn't been in years. Some people has left because they was church hurt by a person or a church that goes there. And I'm not going to say the church does it. I would say the person in the church did it. Or may have said something that uh, didn't agree with you and maybe you left on bad terms. But I'm here to tell you, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I believe that anybody, that, that, that anybody who who believes in Jesus Christ and you're trying trying to live a godly life, and you want to come in here the way you look, then you need to come in here the way you look. I don't think it should be anything that says or application that you had to fill out to let somebody in a church do. I'm sorry. I know people um, disagree. I believe in reverence in the house of God. I believe that we're supposed to have respect. But at the same time, a soul is a beautiful, wonderful soul that you just can't mark out because they don't have the same shoes you got or they don't have the same suit you got or they don't have the same way of talking that you have or they don't know the Bible like you think you know it or they don't use a certain type of Bible. Now I want to tell you something. 
Salvation is given to you as a free gift from Jesus Christ. And I think salvation should be offered to everybody, every race, every nationality. Anybody who wants to hear about the name of Jesus Christ, it should be offered to. With no questions asked, amen. Who am I? Who am I to give you an uh, application and ask you, do I think you need to straighten up before you come to Christ? No, that ain't my job. God uses me, God uses you to go out here and speak to people. Sow the seed in their heart. But you got to step back because only God can water it, only God can grow it, and only God can change a man or woman's life. Amen? Amen. Only God. What does it say? It says, no one is righteous, no, not one. That means nobody is perfect. Nobody is righteous. Nobody deserves to stand by the right hand of the Father. Nobody. But one, and that's Jesus. So when we get on them soapboxes and we start getting that self-righteous attitude, we need to stop and say, who am I? Am I any better? Do I take my sin and look at it and justify somebody else's to make mine look less? I think that's what happens. I think a lot of times that happens. But I don't want one day to stand in front of God and have to answer. What made you any better than that person? What made your life any better than that person's life? I want, to, I want God to say, well, it's well with my soul. It's well with my soul. I want to be a good servant, not somebody to push people away. And I am very thankful for Sunday. Y'all have no idea what kind of feeling that is. To look back at my life a little over seven years ago, and the devil staring at me with me looking back in the mirror and telling me that I would never make it and I'm better off dead. Let me tell you something. God can do miracles. Amen. God can do miracles. I know a lot of people went through a lot more than I did and went through a lot more um, agony and a lot more defeat. And my drug of choice may not have been like yours, but I know what it feels like to wake up and want so bad that you can't even enjoy your life. And that you can't even look at your family with a smile because only you got one mission in your mind. And that's a mission to get high no matter the cost, no matter the pain, and no matter what it does to your life. Who wants to live like that? And I know it's a grip. It's a grip that nobody can explain but the person that's been there. Nobody can explain that. If you don't know about it, the best thing to do is not say nothing bad about it because I hear so many people talking. Well, why can't the person just stop? Why has the person got to go do what they do for it? Let me tell you something. I did stuff that I swear to myself that I would never do in my life, but I found myself doing those very things that I told my mother that I would never do growing up. I found myself being that person that I used to look down at. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. I worked all the time. I made good money. And I remember going to church sometimes. And I would hear these stories about somebody coming to church wanting to borrow money or somebody come to church because they was on drugs. And a part of me, I would say, well, they need to get a job just like I got to work. Let me tell you what come behind it. I found myself. It knocked on my door and come on in. And it tried to kill me and destroy me. And it gave me a different look, outlook in life. It gave me a different look towards people's lives. It made me love people that was addicted. It made me love people that were suffering the battle of um, alcohol. I mean, people say, well, how? Well, where's your love coming from? My love is coming from Jesus Christ. Because Jesus doesn't see you as that crack addict. Jesus don't see you as that drug addict or alcoholic. He loves you. Look, he loved us before we even love ourselves. Amen? He loved us before we come to him. A lot of people doubt Jesus' love. They, they, doubt, they doubt that God loves them. Let me ask you something. God loved us enough to send his son Jesus to die on the cross before we ever accepted Jesus, amen? But he did that because he knew that we couldn't do it ourselves. He knew that the, we didn't have the power nor the strength to do it, so he had to send his son Jesus to die on that cross. And thank God for that. 
That's in the power of love. That's in the power of life. Some people say, well, Jamie, you're going to die one day. Yes, I'm going to die, but I ain't going to die. I'm just, going, I'm just dying from this old world. But I'm never going to die because I got everlasting uh, life with Christ. Amen. Forever and ever. And that's the hope that Jesus Christ gives us. That's the hope that we should have. And that's the hope that we should want to uh, take on when the enemy is coming against us, telling us we can't and we won't. But thank God for his love. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his mercy. I wouldn't be here. I know that. And I know everyone in here thinks the same thing right now. But listen to verse 6 right here. We were weak and helpless because we could do nothing on our own to save ourselves. And we couldn't. There's nothing we could do. We might be able to temporarily uh, hold things off or your money might temporarily buy a doctor that can heal you for a little time. But it's nothing that you can do when it's your time. It's your time. Uh, someone had to come rescue us. Not only did Christ come at a good time, he came exactly at the right time. Amen. Amen. According to God's own schedule. That's why I was telling you, God don't make mistakes and God's got a perfect timing for our life. God controls everything. You do know that. So when you are powerless, you take your problems to God. You tell God, I mean, you tell your problems how big your God is. God sent Jesus Christ to die for us, not because we were good enough, but because he loved us. And I said this earlier. Remember when you down or doubt God's love. He loved us before we turned to him. In other words, he loved us before we even decided to follow him or accept Jesus. All right. With that said, I wanted to stop. And please tell your family, tell your friends about um, Sunday morning. Sunday school is going to be at 945. And um, the service will start about quarter to 11 and try to get here at least by quarter till so we can get started and see what God's going to do in our life Sunday. I think we're going to be shocked and I, it, it would be a, a blessing to see people come through that door that we hadn't seen in a while. And I'm talking about the whole group hadn't seen. And I know you know somebody that lives beside you that's not going to church anywhere. You know somebody that you hang out with that's not going to church. Just get them here one, one time and let, let them decide and see what God does with their heart. So if you've got friends you've been trying to reach and, and, and you've been coming to church and they've been seeing you coming to church, the best way to lead somebody to Christ is start and invite them to go with you to church. Start getting them involved in your life. And if both of you use together, guess what? Both of y'all can serve God together now. Amen. And it's a whole lot fun of serving God than it is serving the devil. Amen. With that said, we'll take about a five-minute break, and then we'll um, come in and do our share group.